Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Bates, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the National Trust, and also the 2019 President of the American Institute of Architects. So I'm here today to uh, talk to our guest, who's Lakeisha Woods, uh, EVP and CEO of the American Institute of Architects. Over the past several years, Lakeisha has held several significant leadership roles in the design and construction industry. She most recently served as the president and chief executive officer of the National Institute of Building Sciences, uh, which convenes experts in the building industry, design, government, and regulation to identify and develop solutions to critical issues impacting the built environment, including climate action and natural disasters and inequity. Likewise, Lakeisha is currently the board chair of the American Society of Association Executives and served as the vice chair of the U.S. Green Building Council. So I ask you to join me in welcoming Lakeisha Woods our guest today. Thanks, Bill. Well, hello, everyone. I am delighted to spend some time with you during the Past Forward National Preservation Conference. Conferences like these are so important because they create stronger bonds of partnership, lines of communication, and opportunities to explore shared commitments to progress. In my view, the work of the National Trust for Historic Preservation and the priorities of the American Institute of Architects are already quite aligned. For starters, AIA is focused on ensuring that architecture strengthens our communities, just like the National Trust. And as Bill just noted, a sustainable future requires that conservation and preservation are among the top choices made by architects and the design community. To that end, AIA is committed to providing the tools and resources architects and the broader design community need to preserve and conserve spaces and places that improve the quality of life of the community and furthers our understanding of our shared history. So thank you again for the opportunity to join you today. Back to you, Bill. Oh, thanks, Lakeisha. Yeah, and, and that's that's a great segue into my next question. Is, uh, you know, the uh, 2002 uh, agenda for uh, our past forward uh, conference is uh, about leading change together. And uh, the conference's theme is about moving from vision to action and uh, and, and that's important. We, we have developed a vision that we think is preferable for our country and for uh, preservation. And uh, so uh, I'd like uh, to talk a little bit about the importance of partnerships uh, to help solve big problems. Uh, so you know, that idea of, of moving from vision to action together, would you mind talking about that a little bit? Absolutely. So one of the best aspects of my role is the opportunity to speak to other members of the architecture, engineering, and construction sector that I often refer to as AEC. Even though we all play different roles, what unites us is a common vision of a built world that empowers and inspires. Events like this are important reminders that solving big problems means working together to turn vision into action. The pandemic, the worsening climate crisis, and the urgent need to address inequities have made clear that partnerships are more important than ever. Successfully addressing the challenges we face requires a comprehensive and coordinated effort. I am proud of the work AIA has done and eager to build on our success by among other things, deepening AIA's partnerships, because convening and bringing people together are so important for us to really solve those big problems. That's great. Yeah. It, while we're on this 
thought of big problems and solving them. As I, I know from my, my time at AIA, uh, its strategic plan uh, has two top priorities. Uh, and, and they're focused on using the power of design to address issues like climate emergency and creating more equitable uh, a society. So given that, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit of, more about um, AIA's role in, in addressing these uh, and, and how it, it dovetails with the importance of preservation. Well, Bill, I, as you know, part of the reason I was so excited for the opportunity to come work with AIA is because of the phenomenal strategic plan that has been developed. And focusing on climate and equity and how those two intertwine is so important, not just for us, but everybody in the built environment and that impacts it. Uh, and so I think it is something that we're going to continue to work on and working with others, again, in partnership, as we discussed. But that strategic plan is something that we must really use as our, our mainstay in our course. Everything that we're doing at the organization ties back to that. And that's one of the things that I've been working on early on in my job here is making sure that the work that we do is really focused and connected back to the strategic plan. I'd say the best answer uh, for this question is really paraphrasing the mission of the National Trust, and that is preserving our historic places and spaces, build stronger communities by telling the full story of our history to reflect the contributions, experiences, and voice of everyone, which speaks directly to the equity pillar of the strategic plan. And also, preservation is almost always a more sustainable option which of course directly aligns with the strategic plan's sustainability pillar. So again, equity and sustainability, it's all that what is all that we're focused on. And clearly that's why it's such a great partnership with the National Trust. Likewise, my next question revolves around the thinking of the, the great transition, uh, the ongoing generational change that we see and the impact uh, uh, that it has on methods and, and stories uh, that we in the AEC space can tell to turn vision into action. So what do you think about the work of the AEC sector and uh, where that, that might take us in collaboration? Well, I have spent my whole career uh, representing associations in this space and uh, the great transition and recognizing the need for generational change, it is long overdue. And for those people who don't know, I started my career at the National Ready Mix Concrete Association. And from there, I went to work for the Associated General Contractors of America, and then to the National Association of Home Builders. And of course, the opportunity to lead as CEO of the National Institute of Building Sciences before I came here to AIA. So I love construction. I love everything that impacts the built environment and the people that we target to help us is so important. I've long spoke about the importance of increasing the diversity in this space and specifically about how we need to increase the number of women and diverse individuals that are targeted to be a part of our industry. Uh, the trades numbers, of course, are still so significantly low. And when I say significantly low, it is still, I believe, around Three, I, I used to tell a, um, give a speech about getting women into the space, and it was the slowest non-traditional career growth of any other non-traditional job. So there are firefighters or even specifically just engineers, but police force and how they change the phrasing, right, from a, a policeman to a police officer, from a fireman to a firefighter, things, culture changes that have to to have to happen in order to increase that diversity in our space. And that's why construction over 30 years went from 3.2% female to 3.6% female. And the other sectors went from, you know, three or 9% to 20 or 30%. There are cultural changes that must happen in order for us to truly bring the changes that are needed in diversity within this 
air in this industry. And of course, new minds bring fresh ideas and perspectives. The AEC space, as in all sectors, it, this is just very true. And it's undergoing this significant generational shift because now we have no choice. All of our, our people are retiring out of our, our space. And so now we're forced to make changes. But the good news is, for the first time, there are four generations that are active in the workplace. Accomplishing any goal requires harnessing all points of view and experiences. That means all of us in the AEC sector must work together to ensure that voices, perspectives, and stories of everyone, everywhere, are reflected in all of our projects. It also means incorporating a diverse set of perspectives into the design process early. I'm reminded of a quote from Zaha, award-winning architect Zaha Hadid. A brilliant design will always benefit from the input of others. Hadid shared that quote a few years before she passed away, but it signifies the power of collaboration and how our work can have a lasting impact that can inspire future generations. So as you can see, I'm very uh, focused on equity and diversifying our space and I think it is the key stepping stone to impact all of the positive change that is uh, available and coming for us as we move forward as a profession. Oh, thanks. That's it's a great answer, and I, I agree with you about uh, uh, expanding uh, the uh, uh, the inclusive uh, work that we we see in these these sectors. It, makes me wonder how we can collectively impact our communities to inspire and enhance the quality of life in America and uh, to, to focus upon sustainability, equity, and, and health to, uh, to make the world a better place. What, what are your thoughts around that? Well, thanks for that question, Bill. First, I think we have to get out and let people know what we do become more involved in local politics or discussions about the built world and in your community. There are no better ambassadors for the power of, of the built world and design to shape the lives and change minds and to inspire than each one of you. And as we expand that understanding through words and deeds, we just, we really need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to let people know the work that we do and why it's important and how it impacts the community. And just so you know, here in Washington, we are already working as a team to advance policies that harness our collective potential to drive positive and lasting change. And of course, we're working with allies in Congress to secure appropriation requests that strengthen preservation as an effective vehicle for greater equity in our communities. And that's just to name a few ways that AIA and the National, Pro National Trust uh, are working together. So we know that we need to advance our common vision of a built world and we will work together so that we make sure it honors everyone. Yeah, uh, how, how important is uh, our, our work in Washington to, uh, to make sure that uh, there's uh, an awareness of the importance of the built environment and historic preservation. Uh, and, and really appreciate uh, the efforts that AIA is uh, putting forth in, forth in that regard. So yeah, regarding my last question, I, I was wondering how are environmental issues and social justice linked together? And, and how can a commitment to sustainability and equity help solve the greatest social issues of this generation? Well, Bill, as you know, uh, since its founding in 1865, AIA members have been committed to safeguarding the public's health, safety, and welfare to improve the nation's quality of life through the power of design. And like the members of the National Trust, AIA members continue to identify and preserve an even more comprehensive catalog of our shared architectural heritage, especially sites crucial to telling the full story of this nation. AIA believes that neither the protection of the historic built environment nor the decarbonization of the building sector are mutually exclusive, but instead are essential together to increase the sustainability and resilience of our communities while honoring the history 
of everyone. Now note, social justice is something that we will continue to work on as a profession and the things that we do, I know can positively impact our community, but it is an ongoing factor that we must continue to work on. And as we adapt our culture within our firms, within our organizations, and as we adjust ourselves as humans, that's really what's going to change and impact our, our social equity within our industry. Well, that's, that's great. Um, I, I really appreciate your, your time and insights today. Uh, they're, they're so relevant to uh, both organizations and um, you've given us a lot to think about. And, and I, I look forward to seeing how AIA and the National Trust uh, work together in the future uh, to tell the full American story and, and build stronger communities uh, through the power of design and place and history in uh, the years ahead. So uh, do you have any concluding thoughts, Lakeisha? Well, I'm just so happy to have had the opportunity to connect with you, Bill. It's always great to see you and, and have a chance to touch base and talk. I am honored that the National Trust invited me uh, to participate in this event. So thank you and thanks to the National Trust for their leadership for the past 70 years, protecting, preserving, and conserving America's historic places and spaces so that they continue to inspire and teach us. Although I'm still eight months on the job, every day I'm learning so much more and I am thrilled that people have shared their thoughts, their visions, and their ideas where they would like to see AIA move in the direction so that we can continue to positively impact society and our profession as a whole. So I am here to listen and learn and continue to work to positively impact uh, this organization. So I'm thrilled to be here. And again, look forward to our continued partnership uh, with the National Trust. Well, thank you again, Lakeisha. And uh, thanks to everyone who's contributing uh, to this conference. And I look forward to uh, continuing to, to work together uh, to, to make a, a brighter future for our country. Thank you, everyone, and have a good conference.